Hey everybody, Father Warner here. Uh, we are we continue our study with the Gospel of Mark, and today is Wednesday of the ninth week in ordinary time. Our text is taken from Mark chapter 12, verse 18 to 27. Again, I want to begin by saying, read the text. Read Mark chapter 12, verse 18 to 27. Uh, pause this video if you must. Read the text and then uh, carry on with this Bible study. So, very quickly, uh, we are in Holy Week. This text is situated in Holy Week. We have seen that Jesus has been attacked by the religious establishment of his time, the Jewish religious authorities. We have seen that they have come out in full force. Uh, the Pharisees, the scribes, the elders, the Herodians joined the, the Pharisees. And in today's text, we have the Sadducees. Now, uh, you need to understand that there were several groups at the time of Jesus, religious groups. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Zealots, the Essenes or the Essenes as some call it. Uh, there were several groups uh, that existed and each of them, while they were Jewish, had different expressions of their understanding of Judaism or followed different aspects of Judaism. Now, the Sadducees were very different from the Pharisees. The word Pharisee means my separated ones. The Pharisees had separated themselves uh, to live a more righteous, ethical Jewish life, not physically, but spiritually. So they continued to live with the masses, unlike, uh, say, the Essenes who decided to physically separate themselves and go into the Judean desert. Now, the Sadducees were quite different. Uh, let's go socio-politically, where did the Sa Sadducees uh, stand and then I'll go to where they were religiously, which is linked to our text. Socio-politically, these were the ruling class at that time. They were the aristocrats. They ran the Sanhedrin, uh, uh, which was the Jewish religious council they were in bed politically with the Romans because these were one of the richest class of people, very, very influential. And so, as I said, they were in bed with the Romans. They had a line that said, while they reigned, let us gain. So, they were not going to upset the political uh, uh, cart. Uh, they were going to remain very neutral, cooperate with the Romans uh, and, of course, uh, join the Romans in uh, squashing any kind of rebellious talk. So therefore, they see Jesus uh, as a rebel because his kind of talk upsets the Pax Romani, the peace of Rome that Rome would very brutally enforce. Now, let's go and look at the Sadducees with regard to their religious leanings and religiously while they were Jews, they were very different from the Pharisees because the Sadducees accepted only the first five books of, uh, of what we would call the Pentateuch, they would call the Torah. So it was just the Torah for them, nothing else. No prophets, no wisdom literature, nothing. So they would stick to these first five books only. And herein lies their problem because they are now going to reject the resurrection. They are going to reject spirits. They are going to reject angels because the Torah is silent on the resurrection. Now, it's very interesting. Uh, while you may not have an explicit reference uh, to the resurrection, you would have, as Jesus will answer them, and very clear implicit reference to the resurrection. But because there was no explicit reference to the resurrection, they rejected the resurrection, they rejected spirits, they rejected angels. Now, obviously, they have come to Jesus um, to trap him. They call him master, as all the others do. But they have come to trap him because they see Jesus, as I said, as a socio-political threat to the stability and the peace in Jerusalem. And it was to their advantage to keep Jesus in check so that their business, their wealth, their position, their standing 
was maintained. So you can see they have their own agenda going. It's not for the love of the nation. It was really for their own personal gain and their own personal love. And they come to Jesus with a question on the resurrection. Obviously, they are making fun of him. So they bring him this bizarre case of, um, they say, Master, we have it from Moses in writing. That if a man's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, then the man must marry the widow to raise up children for his brother. Now, what is this? This is called the Leverite law. Levir means brother-in-law and you'll find the Leverite law in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 25 verses 5 to 10. Let me explain the Leverite law to you and you'll see how they take the Leverite law and they link it to the resurrection and put a bizarre hypothetical case to Jesus. So what's the Leverite law? You see, uh, the Leverite law, the, the intention of the Leverite law was to keep land in the possession of the family. So if a man gets married and he dies without a son, the widow could marry somebody else and that land could then move to another person. So in order to keep the land within the family, if there was any brother or any cousin or any kinsman, then they would marry this widow in order that she may have offspring and keep that, keep that land within the family. That's Leverite law. So Levi means brother-in-law. So if, uh, uh, if a man died, then his brother would marry his widow. That's Leverite law. What they do is they take the Leverite law and they take it to a ridiculous level. Uh, a woman, seven brothers, that she marries all the seven brothers, they all die, leaving no child. And now they ask the most ridiculous question, Whose wife will she be in the resurrection? The first, the second, the third or the seventh? And you see, I said this yesterday, you ask Jesus a stupid question, you're going to get a stupid answer. And Jesus gives them, answers them the way they need to be answered. Jesus said to them, is it not the reason why you go wrong is because one, you are ignorant. He says, you understand neither the scriptures nor you understand the power of God. So, you have not understood anything. I mean, you may be in a position, you may hold great titles and uh, positions in society, in the ch in, uh, uh, among the Jews, but you are ignorant. You don't even know your scriptures well enough. Now, if Jesus has to argue with them, he has to argue from the Torah. Remember, because this is the book that they will accept. They come to him and say, we have it from Moses in writing. The reason why they say we have it in Moses from Moses in writing because the first five books of uh, which are called the Torah are attributed to Moses, that Moses wrote these first five books. That's why they say we have it in writing for Moses. So Jesus has to answer them from these first five books. And Jesus answers them from Exodus chapter 3 verse 6 where he says, look, um, look at the incident of the burning bush. And Moses is there in the presence of God. And what does God say to Moses? I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now, here's the point. If there was no resurrection, then God would not have spoken to Moses in the present tense. He would have said, I, I was the God of Abraham and of, of Isaac and of Jacob who are all dead. But the fact is, he says, I am the God, which means that they are all living. Therefore, there is the resurrection. So Jesus has answered uh, the Sadducees. But they are, obviously, as we are going to see tomorrow, there is going to be one more uh, uh, controversy that is going to be brought to Jesus. An ethical question or confrontation that is going to be brought to Jesus on which is the greatest commandment, also brought by a scribe. So for uh, confrontations with Jesus in the temple and Jesus defends each one. Now I want to make a point here. You see Jesus knew his scriptures very very well and so should we. And very often we get bogged down because of the lack of our knowledge for scripture. I know somebody's been writing to me and saying, Father is there any scripture class in um, Bible class in the city of Mumbai? And I 
I, the only thing I could think was the ministry of the word uh, at Goregaon Seminary. But here's what struck me. I think every parish should be having a fantastic Bible class because every priest has been trained for about four years in the seminary on theology and scripture. And if we are trained, then we ought to be teaching in our parishes. You know, this is the weak link in all our parishes. I don't know whether it's in Goa and in Mangalore and in other parts in Kerala, but this is a weak link. The fact that we do not have active, we have a Bible cell. I'm often confused as to what these Bible cells do, except once in a year uh, on Bible Sunday, which is now called the Word of God Sunday, uh, you know, we will talk about scripture. This is not good enough. We are not taking scripture uh, very strongly and very often when our Catholics leave the church to join another group, the, the, what they really gain is the knowledge of scripture, very often misinterpreted. But hey, we are not even interpreting it. So why accuse the others of misinterpreting it? This is the mistake we are making. And authorities, I think the bishops need to take this very, very seriously to ask why such why our priests are not teaching scripture day in and day out because this is key so um, while we may give our clergy a pat on the back on a lot of things and i want you to encourage the clergy i find this is a great lacuna and this lack of knowledge of scripture is an extremely dangerous thing that we are experiencing in the catholic church uh, as a reflection um, the Sadducees were never open to the truth and this can be a dangerous thing. You know, when I speak this, I know I offend some of my own brother priests, but we need to be open to the truth. The laity need to be open to the truth. And until we are open to the truth, we are going to get hit very badly. I, I was watching, I am watching the elections in India and I think the results, even though they are not decisive for the opposition, is a clear mandate for the opposition to say that people after some time are not going to take the nonsense that they are being dished out day in and day out. Uh, if government is not open to the fact that a dictatorial style of running the, gov of the country by the prime minister uh, is something that we have rejected, that so many reject if they don't see this truth, if they don't see the fact that, uh, as we can see, large parts of rural India have voted against the ruling dispensation, that large sections of the Dalit community have voted against the ruling dispensation. If they don't see this fact, if you are not open to the reality, then one fine day when the rug is pulled under our feet, including us in the Catholic Church, uh, we should not be shocked. Uh, I think Jesus is calling us to open our minds in the church, in society, in the world of politics, uh, in everything that we do. God bless you. I want to leave you with a blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to like this video, uh, share this video. Please uh, also um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't done it and I enjoy reading your comments. I have more time these days to read it. So please post your comments. Let me know your mind, especially on Bible study classes that we need to have. And I'd like to encourage you in this new pastoral year that begins in June to encourage your priests to begin these classes. Yeah, uh, You can gently tell them, Father, you've been trained for four years. Uh, start somewhere. We will support you. We're not saying our priests should be experts and giants and everything but i think we need to start encouraging the clergy to start teaching scripture yeah if you've taught it you might as well teach it bye for now and let's continue to pray for our country india through this election result